The Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs was a victory for democracy in America. Abortion is an issue on which the American people have strong and passionate views and disagree, um, as the witnesses here at this hearing demonstrate. Those disagreements have been longstanding, and the way our Constitution operates, typically on issues on which there is sharp disagreement, it is the democratic process that resolves that disagreement. When the Supreme Court decided Roe v. Wade in 1973, seven unelected judges said to the American people, your views don't matter. Your desire to protect innocent life doesn't matter. We know better than you. And we are gonna prevent you from making decisions about protecting life. The consequence of that has been five decades of deep political division because the democratic process was prevented from operating. What Ted Cruz means from that is because the Supreme Court made a decision based on nothing in the um, you know, Constitution that gives a right to women to have an abortion. It's not there. You can take a look at it. You can sprinkle, you know, uh, magic pixie fairy dust all over it. Nothing is going to appear that says there's a constitutional right to murder a child and have an abortion. It's just not there. And so those seven judges back in 1973 basically put that into the Constitution, read that into the Constitution and said, okay, yes, there you have it. And what Ted Cruz basically is saying here is that that, that landmark decision back in 1973 forced it upon everybody. And that's not the way the democratic process is supposed to work, especially in situations like this. Now that a 6-3 majority of the Supreme Court has overturned that decision, questions of abortion will return to the elected branches of government. The democratic process will be allowed to operate. That will mean in bright blue states, tragically, we'll continue to see unlimited abortion on demand. And in redder states, we will see some meaningful restrictions on abortions. And those restrictions will vary state by state, depending on the values and mores of their citizens. And that's exactly the way that it should be. It should be determined up to the citizens of that state should make the decision as to what happens in terms of these laws. Let them vote on it. Let them tell their legislators, their senators, their councils, their towns, their cities, their municipalities, and then the will of the people in that state should determine then basically what goes forward. And then once they make that decision, then again, to judge the constitutionality or the unconstitutionality of that decision, which is basically what happens. And so now with more information that's out there, with more medical um, imaging you know, techniques that are available, all of these things have played into the fact in terms of how people are now looking at abortion. And I think most Americans, you've got a side of Americans that are saying absolutely no exceptions whatsoever. Okay, and that's a minority opinion, I believe. All right, then you've got the other side where basically is saying completely on demand, which is also a smaller fringe, but it's all the Democrats are basically on board with that. Abortion up until the time of birth and then even afterwards. And there's probably somewhere where, like Ted is saying, that some states are going to come up with some alternatives that would be, I guess, okay with most of the citizens to put some type of restrictions on abortion. And then we just have to sort of continue to further the legislative process, to keep, continue to educate people, to try to get to the point where, as Bill Clinton used to say, you know, we want abortions to be, you know, safe, you know, rare, and, um, you know, in, in, in terms of 
just, you know, cutting down on the abortion. That's what Bill Clinton said, right? And we've got to get to that same point where we make it to the point where it is extremely, extremely rare for an abortion. And I think slowly and slowly and slowly we'll be able to do that. It's going to take some time. Look, it took 50 years for Roe v. Wade to be overturned. So let's give this some time to play out the process where each state decides what its laws are going to be in um, going forward in terms of the Roe v. Wade decision. That's how our Constitution was meant to operate. If you disagree with the abortion laws in your state, you have an outlet to express that disagreement. You have an outlet to be involved in the political process. You have an outlet to advocate for what you believe the laws should be. Absolutely. You're not forced to live under the rule of unelected judges operating as philosopher kings and decreeing the rules for 330 million Americans. I believe abortion's a tragedy. The over 60 million unborn children who've never breathed a breath of air, who've never lived, who've never danced, who've never hugged, who've never loved. Our country is far poorer for the millions of African American children who never had a chance to live and contribute to our country. Just another fact on this is that back in 2012, there was a study that was done by New York City, um, and it basically showed that there were more abortions in that year or prior to that year. I forget what it was, but I believe it was for 2012. There were more abortions on black babies than there were babies that were actually born. So in other words... Just think of this, folks. More babies were aborted in the state of New York. Black babies. More black babies were aborted than were actually born. And if you take a look, folks, like you said, we've had millions. They said somewhere maybe possibly 40 to 50 million babies since 1973 have been aborted. The number of those that are African American, staggering, folks. Multi millions, millions upon millions of black babies have been aborted since the ad, since Roe v. Wade. Unfortunately, one of the consequences of the court taking this out of the democratic process is today's modern. Democrat Party has become radicalized on abortion. The case plan, Parenthood versus Casey, a lot of people don't know that the Casey in question there was Governor Bob Casey, who was a Democrat and was pro-life. Today's Democrat Party has said, if you're pro-life, get the hell out. Your views are not welcome in our party. Part of the reason that Democrats in this hearing are painting the Dobbs decision in such apocalyptic terms is they know their view of abortion, which is unlimited abortion on demand up until the moment of birth, partial birth abortion with government funding, with no parental notification and no parental consent, is supported by a tiny minority of Americans. They know that the voters, when given a chance, don't support that radical view. And, and I will point out, there was a time when Democrats used to say the same thing. We all remember Bill Clinton who said he wanted to see abortion safe, legal, and rare. Today's Democrat Party doesn't want it rare. It wants as much abortion as possible. Well, I'll tell you this. When Roe versus Wade was decided, one Democrat who spoke up against it was a fellow named Joseph Robinette Biden who said in 1974, quote, I don't like the Supreme Court decision on abortion. I think it went too far. I don't think that a woman has a sole right to say what should happen to her body. That was Joe Biden in 1974. And you may say, okay, that was a long time ago. What happened to you, Joe? Well, I'll tell you what happened, folks. You got radicalized, as has the Democratic Party. And prior to that or whatever, when I was talking about Bill Clinton, safe, legal and rare, I left out the legal part or whatever. 
That's what the Democrats wanted, safe, legal, rare. But as Ted has said, not anymore. They want it at every opportunity. The feminists talk about it. The radical left talks about it. And now even Joe Biden has basically done a complete turnaround, a complete flip-flop on this issue. All right, let's go to 2007, just 15 years ago. 2007, Joe Biden. Tim Russert says, you supported that ban on late-term abortions. Biden said, I did, and I do. That was 15 years ago. Just weeks ago, the Democrats in this body voted to strike down every restriction on abortion across this country, including bans on partial birth abortion, and every single Democrat but one voted for it. Now, maybe you might say, you know what, Joe Biden was out of step. Well, there's someone else who had similar views, the chairman of this committee. In a June 1983 letter, the chairman of this committee wrote, quote, I have clearly studied the issue, abortion in depth, in favor of the Eagleton Amendment, which states clearly that the right to abortion is not guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. The effect of this amendment will be to return us to the legal environment which existed before Roe v. Wade in 1973, signed. And that is Dick Durbin, as you can see on the document there, the chairman of this committee and what he was saying. Richard J. Durbin, member of Congress. That view continued in August of 1989. Chairman Durbin wrote, and again I quote, I believe we should end abortion on demand. And at every opportunity I have translated this belief into votes in the House of Representatives. He continued to say, I continue to believe the Supreme Court's decision in Roe versus Wade should be reversed. That was the view of a lot of Democrats not that long ago. But today's Democratic Party is afraid of the voters on this issue. What the Supreme Court has done is returned this deeply personal, deeply important, deeply contentious issues to the voters, to let the American people decide. That's democracy. And that's exactly where we should leave it at, folks. That's the democracy working in a constitutional republic where the voters get to decide what laws they want to live by and what laws they decide not to. And that's within that jurisdiction and within that state. And then you've got your ability to vote, one person, one vote. And if you don't like it, then you have means of avenues of appealing that decision. If the, if the appeal is upheld, great. If it's struck down, hey, that's a democratic process at a constitutional republic. And if you happen to be in a state that you don't like, well, then there's always move <laughs> to a state that basically has the values and ideas and things that you espouse. And people do that all the time as well. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Hope you enjoyed Ted Cruz's speech as much as we all did here. And if you haven't already done so, it's your first time here, please subscribe to the channel. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. And I've been your guest host today. My name is Dr. Shake. Hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us with all your friends. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right to right and when you're left 